because of his rocky marriage to the victim, Coelho, the last person to see his wife before she disappeared Friday. He remains a free man tonight. We'll talk about that. Now, Tina's first husband says he thinks he knows exactly who did this to the mother of his three children. Get this. Without a doubt. Why? Without a doubt. He's just look at his history. Look at his history. Tell us what you know about any type of abuse that happened. Actually, it was very quiet. She was quiet about this. I mean, even the children did not. They were, I guess, in fear for their lives. Relatives and neighbors claim the dead woman's husband had beaten her black and blue in the past. The New York Daily News reporting that Tina was very afraid of her husband and that she had filed for divorce and applied for a restraining order. The New York Post reporting surveillance video shows Coelho taking some sort of large bags out of the apartment around the time Tina disappeared. Will that be the evidence? that cops use to nail this guy. One cop was quoted as saying, we're gonna squeeze him until he pops. But he was just there for less than a half an hour, then he left the police station and he's a free man tonight. Hmm. We reached out for Eddie Coelho's lawyer. We did not hear back. Come on the show anytime, lawyer or Eddie Coelho, and tell your side. I'm taking your calls, 1-877-JVM says, straight out to investigative journalist John Lieberman. Cops feared the worst, and unfortunately, they were right. What is the very latest? Well, I'll tell you, Jane, our thoughts and prayers go out to Tina and her family. The very latest is this. Mr. Coelho was very chatty with investigators, according to my sources. When cops went out there initially, he was talking to them, said he got into an argument with his wife, and she scratched his face. But as you alluded to, when he went into the police station today, the 45th precinct, uh, he was less than cooperative. He wouldn't give DNA. He clammed up and wouldn't talk. But you know what? Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. This could actually play into cops' hands in a positive way. This gives them a little bit of time to build the case. And my sources are telling me, bottom line, this guy will get charged sooner rather than later. It's just a matter of getting some of the forensic evidence back and some of the statements in the can. And they're going through the car. They're going through his car tonight at this very hour they're going through it looking for forensic evidence and things like that because that's when he clammed up jane he clammed up when cops said we want to look in your car we want to look for that uh -huh. sheet and things of that sort yeah. and that tells well, you what you need to know let me get this straight this ex-cop this estranged husband accused white beater won't look at photos won't give a dna sample didn't want to let cops uh, get into his car until they had a warrant hmm here's my take sounds like this is a guy with something to hide I mean, look at him. He's walking out of the police station, flanked by two attorneys. Does he look smug to you? Uh, he doesn't look torn up to me about his wife's death, murder. <laughs> We're also hearing Coelho told cops, as you just heard from John, that his wife scratched him in this big argument that they had before she stormed out of the apartment, leaving her car behind at night in the Bronx. Um, now, John Lusich, could it turn out that this was an excuse, the scratching, and if they find evidence of his DNA under her nails, that's why he's saying, being an ex-cop, well, she scratched me. Right, absolutely. you got to understand this guy is an experienced police officer and knows what the cops are going to be looking for. He knows that they already have the body. He knows that they, most likely that they have the video. They're putting it together. He's not going to provide any evidence. And the reason that was such a quick visit with the police department, he goes in with his attorney most likely. And a cop, once he says, I'm, I want to talk to him, I don't want to do anything without my attorney, and the attorney tells him not to say anything, 
it's it's useless. He's got to walk out because the cops will just sit there all day. They can't question him anymore. He's not giving up anything, and he's making these stories up because he knows. And the reason he didn't look at those photos, he knew the cops would be looking at him at reactions at, uh, to those photos when he looked at them. Well, the New York Post reporting uh, court records show Coelho once allegedly went berserk in the home while his wife Tina was holding their then a one-year-old daughter that child is five now that he was allegedly smashing trophies and breaking Tina's phone against a wall the criminal complaint says Coelho told his wife wait till you see what I'm gonna do with your bleeping car I'm gonna break all the windows um, back in 2000 he was forced to quit the police department because of a domestic incident involving a previous wife I am thinking psychologist uh, and psychotherapist Heidi Banks that this guy's got anger issues does he sound like some sort of rageaholic to you absolutely and and also in these domestic violent cases Jane it's when you file a restraining order that the violence escalates usually uh -huh. that is the pattern so it's the minute she went in and filed that restraining order, her life was in danger. And yeah, clearly I, that's what happened. You are so right, because how many times do we have to report on a woman turning up dead who had just gotten a protective order or a restraining order? It's a constant theme, and I think we need to uh, re-examine the entire system as to how those restraining orders are issued and whether or not they're effective at all. I mean, absolutely. Uh, uh, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. It's almost also, like putting a target on your back. We also is really have to what put out doing. something, uh, something to these women also out there who right now are sitting at home going, "Well, I don't want to put out a restraining order. Then what's going to happen to me?" And that's the exact wrong thing to do. Absolutely. You have to keep reporting this, even if you're in that police station every day. You have to keep documenting it. Well, well Stacy Hano, it's Florida prosecutor. What should women do? Uh, we have covered so many stories where women turn up dead after they've gotten a TRO or a protective order, but yet they have to do something because if they don't do anything, that's also a problem. Right. I mean, I, I wish I had the answer. I, I can't look into a ball and tell you what the right thing is. The bottom line is you do have to constantly speak out. If women don't go forward and they don't file these restraining orders, it's just really, a, you know, a free-for-all for the person who is doing the abusing. The bottom line is they have to let other people know, not just the judge with the restraining order. They have to let family members know, friends know, as embarrassing as it might be, as difficult it is to talk about it, so that everybody in the family is on notice that this person is in a toxic relationship and can help them unfortunately it is true sometimes when you go for that restraining order the perpetrator finally says oh my god she's putting the world on notice and so they do put themselves in a position of vulnerability but if other people in the family know if friends know then they could be around to help protect so don't ever think everybody knew her, her, the ex-husband knew the neighbors knew Everybody, the, the mother of this woman knew. Everybody was talking about it. Uh, uh, Jody, Illinois, your question or thought, ma'am? Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, I just want to say my heart goes out to that woman's family, yes. and especially those kids. But here's my question. When they asked him, you know, the guy, for, for the DNA sample or whatever, what was his reasoning why he wouldn't give one? Uh, John, Lieberman, do you have any idea? One. Well, yeah, you don't have to have a reason. He can know. simply say that he didn't want to give one. But I can tell you one thing. Those detectives are watching him 24 hours a day. Don't be surprised if they're looking at any cigarette butts he might throw out, any soda cans. They will get DNA from him, and well, they will get, get it warrant. soon. Yeah, they've got a warrant to search his house. They can, they can follow Stacey. him around and try to pick up a cigarette butt, or they can apply for a search warrant so that he has to give his DNA. And I, you, but wait a you, second. He, can't he, they just take he, it off of uh, evidence that they find in the house? They've gone through yeah, the house. They, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's other ways of getting his DNA. So he's going to have to, some, at some point, they will have his DNA. Because he didn't give it today doesn't mean anything. All right, more on this. We're just getting started. Oh, the murder of a mother of four. They should. They'll get the DNA if she scratched him and it's under her fingernails. I wonder if the police officers have to give a sample of their DNA as part of their position. It'd be interesting to know if anybody asked that question or if anyone knows out there in YouTube land if police officers have to give a DNA sample.